Hello and welcome back to another episode of Move Again Podcast. As Come on. We weekly recap what God has been saying to us on our Sundays across yeah. our different locations as we navigate our way through this profound book called Exodus. It's almost felt like a gift to us in the season yeah. as we see God moving again afresh in our world, in our Come church, in, in, in a new way. So maybe he's not moving again. He's always been moving, but we've got eyes to see him moving again afresh. And in response, we want to be obedient and keeping in step with him. So it's really great to have you again. And we've got Mark Van Pleasen back. He has been Please, on Mark holidays. Carl. Mark Carl Van Pleasen. Van Pleasen. Mark right. Carl, MCVP, as they yes, call him. Yes. But good to have you back, Mark. And uh, and uh, this last Sunday, we preached from Exodus 18, 19, 20. Yep. His narrative and where we finished a couple of weeks ago was we got to the place where God was providing for them in the wilderness, water from a rock. But then it felt like it feels like a transition element to that. Maybe tell us about this past Sunday, what, what, what has gripped you and, um, and what, what, what you preached. Thank you. It is so good. It was fun to be preaching again on Sunday. Absolutely loved it. And yeah, it's this. I think I have a fly on my coffee. Just I so saw that land and I, I, I just leave it. I thought I left it and you've gone with it. <laughs> Gabriel, just let it be. It's full. <laughs> I just had to do that. Sorry. Carry on, Mark. I apologize. Oh my gosh. No, it was amazing to be preaching again on Sunday. And it feels like God has been moving in power. So he's moved upon yes. his people and on behalf of his people in power. We see everything from the, the staff that turns into a snake through yeah. to the, the, the plagues, through to God opening up the sea, all of that. Then God gives us promises, I'll provide, I'll care yes. for you. Even just the Amalekites encounter, we didn't get a chance to open up that amazing. Yeah. But it's like God provides food in the middle of the desert, then he provides water with the promise of living water to come. come on. And then it's the Amalekites and God yeah. saying, I will give you victory over your enemies. They yes. weren't a trained army. No. They were slaves. They lifted rocks for yeah. 400 years. They would have been strong, but they weren't a trained army ready to face the Amalekites. Yeah. And yet God gave them a victory in that moment. And then there's the, the credible Je Jethro moment, the father-in-law who comes, and it's an incredible thing. He sees God do his miracles yeah. and becomes a convert to believing yes. in this God of heaven. I think yeah. that's awesome. Brilliant. Yeah, and then there's the transition and this covenant that is given to God's people. God says, actually, if... Yeah. For the first time, there's an if. For the first yeah. time, there's a demand on God's people. Yes. For the first time, there's a call to God's people. I'm calling you to move. Yeah. If you will obey yeah. and if you will follow my commands, if, and then I will make you a treasured position, a holy people, a yeah. royal priesthood. God, it's incredible. And it, it, it does seem like a transition because, yeah. you know, as you said, there were soldiers and God's teaching them that actually I've set you free, but I've set you free for a purpose. I'm not yeah. just, yeah, the whole up to that point is I've set you free from Egypt. I've set you free from Pharaoh. Yeah. you free from the gods of Egypt, as Jethro says in, in chapter 18. But then now it's almost like a transition saying, and, and that verse 4 in chapter 19, God says, now. It's almost like, yeah. now, now what's the story? And I think it's so wonderful when we think about that reality because... That's the narrative in our world. Freedom, yeah. freedom. And, and we see at the beginning of the series, chapters 1 to 18 was conveniently cut out by the slave owners over uh, black slaves in the 1800s from their Bible because they didn't want to, they wanted them to be Christian but not free. But it almost feels in the reverse in our day and age. It almost yeah. feels like we are very familiar and happy with chapters 1 to 18, a cry of freedom. Let my people go. I yeah. want freedom. But we don't want any of the demands that God puts us on upon us, or, or we actually don't know understand the purpose of that freedom. Yeah. And and maybe help us understand that there's this transition at a mountain mountain there called Sinai where Moses goes up on behalf of the people. Yeah. But it feels like God is now shifting them for a different purpose. And actually, I'm taking you somewhere. Well, it's this big lesson. That actually salvation by the blood, which has happened for them, the Passover has happened, they're free, yes. they're out of the hands and the control of the oppressors, they're out, they're yeah. still wandering in a desert, but they're free being led by God. But salvation by the blood of the Lamb is just the beginning, yeah. just the starting point for those who've been set free by the grace of God and the salvation of yeah. God. And now what we're not saying, so now we're adding on a whole bunch of law. No, we know we have the new covenant yeah, and on. we preach the new covenant, but we're so scared to go even near the commandments. Yeah. It's like, whoa, God would make a demand. Yeah. It's like God has set me free. Awesome. But he wants my time. Yeah. He wants mm. my talents. Mm. The God of heaven needs my time. No, he wants you to partner yes. in the great gospel story, yeah. the redemption of all things, the renewal of all things, God's grace poured out in all things. He says, I want you to partner. Why? Because yes. I want you to be like me yeah. to this world. And I think it is a great transition, yeah. both in the story and the Exodus story, but also it's a great pointing towards Jesus yeah. saying, actually, even as we come to Easter this weekend, it's, hey, you've been saved. The resurrection has happened. Now what? Yeah. 
Purpose, yes. purpose, yes. purpose. I haven't just called you to be a people wandering in a desert. I've not just called you to be a people wandering in the desert of 2022. I've called you to purpose. Yeah. And I've called you to be a people who are going to enter the promised land, enter the promises of God Beautiful. for your life. Yeah. But it demands a few things. It yes. demands obedience. Yeah. Yes, Christians, obedience. That's why we preach God is king and Lord. He's still king. Yeah. Come on. And, um, and yeah, we want to be calling the church to that. I think we're giving this great narrative of moving again into the promises of God, into the promises land, but being a people who follow God's presence. We have the Spirit of God. Yeah. And, and, I think and, and, and that's the beautiful thing. 50 days yeah. from the, the Passover to Sana. Yeah. But a better 50 days, a greater promises from, from God's resurrection yes. to Pentecost. Come on. And we get the Spirit of God to live this I life. We get to do this journey not on our own like they had to with trying to hold on white knuckle to laws and obedience to laws. We get to hold on to God. Come on. And He leads us as sons and daughters. And that's what I love. I love that shift towards purpose. And I yeah. think that's the, it's almost after two years of that have been really hard and for people. And people have lost purpose, lost mission, lost, why am I here? Not just to survive, not just to deal with my own things. Yeah. Actually, the series is lifting our eyes a bit and saying, God, there's, there's a mission. Well, nothing's been exposed more than church attendance as yeah, purpose for the believer. Come on. Never was the purpose for church. Yeah, and on. the church being formed and the bride of Christ and the beloved and mm. these language of the treasured possession was about church attendance. Yeah. It was about a people thing. who gather and they gather because there's a sending out, a releasing, a coming together to receive the word of God and the gifts as we see in Ephesians, yeah. but being released into a world with purpose. Yeah. And there's a purpose for your freedom. Yes. And I know it is for freedom's sake Christ has set us free. I know these things. I know God called us, but called, called us into yeah. his purposes. He's the one who's paid the price. Yes. He says, actually, I'm calling you to something. I love that. You've got something bigger for your story. Not to exist, so one day when you've got the marker, a hey, ticket to heaven. No, that's not what we're talking yeah. about. Something we're talking about thing. life now. The John 10, 10 life promise to the believers mm. now. Yeah. Might be still in a desert. Maybe you're still in a desert. Maybe you still feel wondering. Well, God says to those people he gave, yeah. a pillar of fire by day, uh, by night, and a pillar of cloud by day. That was awesome. Mm. A miracle. But how much a greater miracle that God would put His Spirit yeah. inside of us to lead us. And that's, that's what I love, in the fact of that Mount Sinai was a mountain of fire. And yeah. Hebrews 12 talks about that, uh, that we have not come to Sinai, we've come to Mount Zion. They couldn't go up. Yeah, they couldn't go up. And there was a fire, and the fact that there's fire that prohibits them from touching. Yeah. Then, as you said, the 50-day reality, in up, the upper room, Pentecost, the fire Amazing. comes down, the Spirit comes on. But why? To get the people going on mission. Yeah, yeah. Not come to on. keep them around that upper room, but to get them out. And uh, I think that's wonderful. And I, what I loved about it for me was Exodus 18 is this narrative of Jethro giving this incredible strategic advice to Moses on how to lead two million people. Pastoral, strategic leadership advice, yeah. which is so brilliant. And then, which is brilliant and helpful. But God's word on that situation, two million people who are crying out for provision, crying out for the comfort, crying out for leadership and angry with Moses about this and that and and God just says to Moses, come up the mountain. I want you to see from my perspective. I want you to encounter me. Yeah. And I think that's so often we can get so caught up with people and things are happening down here. Yeah. But God is still a God saying, actually, if you want to transition into purpose, you first have to come up the mountain. Come yeah. up, you've got to see what I see. And yeah. that, I love that's the move again narrative for me. That actually, we've got to see God moving first. And yeah. then we've got to be obedient towards that in response. Yeah, and there is a response. And yeah. even the series as we preach, you realize that these people, it was God moved in power on behalf of the people. Yeah. God gave his promises to the people. They got to receive them. Mm. But now it, there's a shift change to purpose. It's actually, if you will obey. I love that. Now, if you will obey and Come if on. you'll follow my commands. And it's not a God, it's not a love on condition. Yeah. Now, the cross proved God loves unconditionally. God loves, but he's, yes. the, the, the purpose and the walking into the more yeah. has this reality that God makes some demands of the believers. Yeah. Now, it's not a popular narrative, and it's not the thing you first thing you're going to hear walking into church. God's looking for your time, talents, and treasures, church. Come <laughs> on. No, it's, it's, it's an invitation yeah. into a much bigger story that a price has been paid, and we get to participate. Beautiful. Yeah. And it's participation. We talk about it like price. No, the price has been paid. Yeah. I love it. The price has been paid. Yeah. It's what we come to Easter with the knowledge mm. the price has been paid. Mm. But 
we get to participate. I love that. And go on the journey with it. I think that's a great way to sum it up. But this is not a, it's not a demand, it's an invitation. So it is. It's, it's, it's well, the covenant is, yeah. it says, actually, I want you to be my special possession, yes. my treasured possession. I love it. Even the translation of that treasured possession is something more. It's something yeah. God takes with. Beautiful. And God says, I want you. And it's an invitation. But I also, and you know, even as we, we get nervous to touch on the commandments. Sorry, I know we want to land. No, but we get nervous not. to touch on the commandments because God, no, God, those commandments are helpful for us. Yeah. It's something like, honor your father and mother. I think it's a great commandment. Yeah. It's, it's a, something we should take to and say, Spirit of God, bring life. So my enablement Come to on. do that. Because that's what yes. it was. They were clueless people yeah. who'd been slaves for 400 years, now trying to walk out Beautiful. freedom. They don't know. Yeah. Don't know. You give someone who's been chained for 400 years now freedom. They won't know. It's the person who comes out of prison for 50 years. Yeah. They do not know how to do life. Yeah. So God says, I'm going to help you in this manner and the shape. But I love that first, you, you will not have any other God. You will have no mm. other gods before me. And, and, and it's yeah. that you is a singular you. Mm. It's not a plural. It's a, it's a word to a nation, but God says, you, yeah. you believer, you individual, you will have no other yeah. God but me. And I love that. I saw that and I thought, yes, this is a personal God yeah. leading a mighty nation yeah. on a journey through a desert. And God's still looking for the heart of Brilliant the one. Mark. That's, uh, that's, I think, the transition is that God, the narrative of Jethro was a response to him was yeah. saying, he is God, I've seen how God set you free from Egypt, from Pharaoh, from yeah. the gods of Egypt. And then God speaks and says, you saw how I led you out of Egypt to myself. Yeah. God says, I am, Amazing. yes, I said you free from, but I'm setting you free for a purpose. Amazing. And the ultimate of that is God himself. We yeah. get God. You shall have no other gods. And it's not an insecure God. It's a God saying, I will satisfy. Yeah. I am the only satisfaction. So I think it's remarkable. And if you missed the, any of those sermons, Mark's sermon was called Treasured Possession. I preached on the same passages, a little slightly different angle called Climb the Mountain. And, uh, but I, I love the fact that they actually... Because you're a mountain climber. I'm a mountain climber. You know, I, I, I'm a mountain climber, people, in the spiritual. <laughs> but, um, but it's really, really great, Mark. I'm loving the series. And uh, this weekend coming up, if people watching it in this, in this weekend is Easter. We're leading up Good Friday on Friday. Yeah, come on. Easter Sunday. And we know that we're going to park the Easter, the Exodus series for this weekend because we want to lean into this gospel preaching moment where we clearly preach about the death uh, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, yeah. which we do every week. Yes. But, but this week in particular, we know that people are coming to church and the believers need to uh, celebrate and need to just make the most of this moment. But also unbelievers need yeah. to come and hear the clear presentation that Jesus is everything. Yeah. And, and you know, the challenge is, it's like we keep saying, invite someone to church. Yeah. The reality is, I don't know about you, but I was invited. I was invited by my yeah. sisters to a church and I got pulled into a story and then invited to a small group and I got invited yeah. to pursue God. I got invited to things. No, the reality is there's still power there. Will you use the power of invitation? It's yeah. a spiritual thing. It's yeah, more it than just a, shucks, I need to do my Christian duty yeah. now. No, we believe in the gospel. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge of our age, mm. is people almost know what they don't believe. Yeah. Everyone's very clear about what they don't believe. But if you ask someone, what do you believe that that's is hard. driving your yes. convictions? And I want to call the church at this time, know what you believe. Yes. Stand on it and then understand that has implications yeah. and reach out to your world. Invite people. Invite them to yeah. come in person to our services that are just the mornings, yeah. Good Friday and Sunday. But also into your world to reveal Jesus to them. We at uh, our Century City location, we, we announced the Easter services then said, actually, we're going to invite people. So he said, get your phone out, write down on a note, I will invite and write down three names. And while, while people were doing it, then all of a sudden I realized I probably should do it as the someone driving the thing. And I suddenly went into blank, who are those three names? That, and I was like, I need a little bit more time. But actually, as I prayed, God gave me those names that actually I want to invite those people. This is a spiritual thing. Pray. Actually, God wants to do something, a miracle. I did a funeral last week of a guy who encountered God only because somebody invited him to church. Only. And I yeah, go, amazing. his eternity was decided by, on the back of somebody simply saying, come to church with me. And I go, how simple is that? But how remarkable is the fruit? And yeah. we're trusting for that this weekend. No, right? we are. We are. That's the point. Yeah. That's the reason not to fill up church and not to fill up buildings. It's not at all. Yeah. We want to see lives changed by the gospel and the grace and the goodness of Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven and the Spirit of God working as His people gather. So, church, come and gather. Yeah. Bring your world, bring yeah. your kids, bring your family. There's going to be amazing things for the kids. They're going to have a lot of fun and they're also going to hear about Jesus. For the families as well, it's a big day yeah. and a big weekend. So, let's maximize this yeah. opportunity for the kingdom. And with this series, we're pressing into the second half of the book of Exodus. So yes. be reading with us. Read along. If you haven't been read up to this moment, don't worry. Jump into the Word of God. We love seeing it fresh yeah. in our lives. But we love you lots. And that's a wrap on this episode.